1898, Hawaii was officially annexed by the United States. Ever since, Native Hawaiians and Americans alike have questioned the legality of the annexation, and they are making their voices heard. In fact, in 2009, a case was brought to the attention of the Supreme Court over issues of land in Hawaii. Although the justices addressed this issue, it was not completely resolved. To date, many solutions have been proposed, but none have been satisfactory for all sides of this debate. Prior to the annexation, Hawaii had already established itself as a kingdom. In 1842, King Kamehameha III sent envoys to France, Great Britain, and the United States to ask for recognition of Hawaiian sovereignty. President John Tyler recognized Hawaiian independence on December 19, 1842. Over the next 44 years, Hawaiian independence was acknowledged by various countries across Europe, Asia, and the Pacific. However, on January 16, 1893, U.S. troops landed on Oahu. This was a violation of Hawaiian sovereignty because neither the governor of Oahu nor the Kingdom of Hawaii's foreign affairs agreed. The next day, six Hawaiian Europeans and seven foreign businessmen, led by John L. Stevens, U.S. Minister of Hawaii, used the name Citizens Committee of Public Safety and announced that they were the new Hawaiian government. Queen Liliuokalani protested but was ignored. When President Grover Cleveland assumed power in the United States, he investigated the situation and found that it violated international law. As a result, he agreed to restore the Hawaiian government if the Queen forgave all involved in her overthrow. From there, the Republic of Hawaii was created. The Newlands Resolution, finally annexing Hawaii, was created because after the United States declared war on Spain, the U.S. Representative Francis Newland submitted a resolution calling for the annexation stating that it was crucial to gain this land for military purposes. President McKinley signed the bill, and on August 12, 1898, Hawaii officially became a U.S. territory. President Cleveland uh, had a much more limited view of what government should do, uh, and uh, he didn't believe uh, in expansion uh, and imper or, or imperialism in the way that McKinley did. McKinley was a great imperialist, and he's, of course, the person who decided to annex the Philippines. So it was this period of imperialism that finally led to the annexation of Hawaii. The debate over this is that, contrary to other annexations, there was no treaty of cession by the head of state, Queen Liliuokalani. This means that Hawaii never agreed to have their land ceded. Therefore, many believe that legally, Hawaii is not really a territory of the United States, but a sovereign kingdom without a government. They argue that all public and crown lands are not really American, and should be given back to the native Hawaiians. Overall, it is believed by some that the agreement between President Cleveland and Queen Liliuokalani is still in effect, therefore making Hawaii not legally a territory or a state of the United States of America. There are many consequences resulting from this debate. One consequence is the apology resolution. On November 23, 1993, U.S. President Bill Clinton signed what was known as the Apology Resolution. The purpose of this document was... I quote, Congress apologizes to Native Hawaiians on behalf of the people of the United States for the overthrow of the Kingdom of Hawaii on January 17, 1893, with participation of agents and citizens of the United States, and the deprivation of rights of Native Hawaiians to self-determination, unquote. Congress also committed itself to acknowledging the ramifications of the overthrow and supporting reconciliation efforts between Native Hawaiians and the United States. Unfortunately, many Native Hawaiians do not support the apology resolution. They feel it's not fair that the United States government can simply apologize for their unlawful actions and reconcile with the Hawaiians without anything in return for them. Another consequence of this debate is the dispute over public and crown lands in Hawaii. After the monarchy of Hawaii was overthrown and Hawaii became a territory of the United States, all of the public and crown lands went to the federal government. However, in 1959, Hawaii became a state and these lands were returned to Hawaii. In 2009, a company requested permission to build housing on these lands. Some Native Hawaiians believe that they were entitled to these lands because they had once belonged to their ancestors. The United States uh, should have no automatic 
right to the lands in Hawaii. They have a right to sovereignty over Hawaii, but not the right to the title of land. This issue was first brought to the attention of the Hawaiian Supreme Court, who ruled that Native Hawaiians had the right to claim these lands. Unsettled, this lawsuit was then brought to the United States Supreme Court and was argued on February 25, 2009. The original decision was overruled. The Supreme Court claimed that the apology letter never gave the Native Hawaiians any rights to the land. The resolution never said specifically, give it back to them. So, fair or no, legal, I guess I would have to say yes. Due to statehood in 1959, all of the public lands are owned by the state, demolishing any claims that Native Hawaiians had on the land. Furthermore, the Akaka Bill has resulted from this debate. Senator Daniel Akaka and Senator Daniel Inouye proposed this bill in the year 2000. The purpose of this bill is to give certain special rights to the Native Hawaiians as a minority and to allow them to form their own sovereign government. Native Hawaiians would be considered the equivalent of a Native American or Native Alaskan tribe if they chose to accept the bill and apply to be a tribe. The bill also states that after the recognition of this Hawaiian governing entity, there will be negotiations to take place on the topics of the control and transfer of Hawaiian lands and natural resources between this entity and federal and state governments. I think getting a good portion of the loaf is better than getting no slices at all. So. Um... You know, I think it certainly can't reverse what happened any more than the Indian tribes in the United States can get reversed um, what was done to them. But it's a step in the right direction. However, in a recent poll taken, only around one-third of Hawaiian residents support it. They fear that by enrolling in the entity that the bill proposes, they would therefore be accepting that they were under the control of the United States, and their independence would no longer be possible. Another concern is the fact that the Kaka Bill divides the residents of Hawaii racially. Some failures of the debate include that Native Hawaiians are unhappy with the United States' occupation in the islands. In addition, racism has started to divide the people of Hawaii, and Natives have begun to act unwelcoming towards American tourists and new American residents. Also, the standard quality of life is down for many Native Hawaiians. The impacts of the overthrow continue as Native Hawaiians are at the lowest levels of achievement by all social and economic measures. Additionally, if Hawaii ever becomes a separate nation, many Americans living in Hawaii will have to deal with complications having to do with citizenship if they wish to continue living in Hawaii, but want to be American citizens. Finally, since President Obama was born in Hawaii, if its statehood is declared to have been illegal, some may question whether or not his presidency is truly valid. I guess if everything lined up in the way that would unravel the statehood and annexation of Hawaii, it certainly would put into question um, his constitutional qualifications for the office of president. But however grim the failures look, there are also successes. For instance, Pearl Harbor has been a key military base since Hawaii was annexed, especially during World War II. Also, Hawaii's government has flourished from the tourism taxes it collects every year. In addition, more and more Americans moved to Hawaii, raising the population. In some people's opinion, the annexation of Hawaii has brought some positive influence to the one struggling Hawaii. You can't go back and erase history, mm -hmm. so that's why I don't think uh, independence is a realistic solution. I think there's a, very many Native Hawaiians who feel very fortunate to be American citizens. So I think there are a minority, there are definitely Native Hawaiians who are very vocal. And there's, but there's a lot of people who are very, are very happy and embracing of the culture. In conclusion, this debate is of great importance to many Hawaiians, primarily the natives. There are many bold and radical views on the annexation. This debate has had various effects on our country, some positive and some negative. What do you think? Is Hawaii legally a state, or should the flag look like this?